Hello, welcome back. Today I want to be talking about Vi and Pad due to a mistake that I've recently made with these things and I thought this should be something that most of you should know. BGA packages if you ever want to route them. Well, let's start off. What is Vi and Pad? Quite literally, it is the Vi that's placed inside the pad and it's a form of technology that allows for, to allow you to place them in a more space efficient manner. So usually with BGAs, you would have the, I know this is a poor example, so let's just go with our, it's usually a standard Vi size that I usually go with and really i wouldn't go with this one either because this might be a, a minimum manufacturer's capability so by this i mean if your manufacturer of choice could only manufacture as a minimum of 0.2 and the diameter is 0.4 and an annular ring of uh, whatever this would be then this would might incur as a cost premium so i would bump that up number a bit to save you the well to save your wallet more than anything really but that's a side note so i'll place this down as you can see for this one we don't really need to because we have four but usually when with fans out when we'll say bj final you place the via right next to the bj grid i'll chuck up a picture to for this basically to be explained so looking at this picture you can see the number of vias that have been placed right next to the pad and this is what we call fanning out by placing these vias next to these pad because that's where the space is and that's how we're able to route them so only if space really permits it but if we didn't have the space then the via would go in the pad as the topic of this video uh, but as you could see clearly that the amount of via is there and imagine having to route all the way from the inner layers to the outer layers you can tell your number of layers on your board is going to go up quite drastically and this is probably the reason again i avoid try to avoid bj packages at all costs because unless they're really easy like this they're just a lot harder and the board can get a bit more expensive with the number of layers you are required to actually move these signals out of the inner layers of the bga but it's not all negative with this via and pad technology with the allow when this allows to be more space efficient with our boards it allows for more heat to be dissipated between our boards what i mean by this is you might have seen with the exposed pad ic's and whatnot that you have fires inside the pads themselves this allows for heat to be dissipated so not just having it concentrated in that pad there but allowed it to be connected directly to the ground layer and dissipated throughout the entirety of the board so it doesn't get too hot and spicy at that moment really how is this done how do we do this vi and pad thing it sounds good on paper besides the extra cost and maybe you have a project that you want to do it so if we go to our via here and let's say we, we placed it well let's make it smaller unrealistically unrealistically i don't know if we'll ever but we'll, we'll, we'll place it here so we have our our via and pad and you know we've made it the same net as this and this is going down to our bottom layer if we can just we cannot just leave it like this we absolutely cannot why because they will literally just drill through this metalize it on top and when you come to solder this actually all the solder will actually go inside that vi and you'll make your you won't be able to mount your component essentially so the process for this is and this is quite a common method is that and some manufacturers might not offer it so you do have to check it gets drilled in resin gets put in and it becomes plated on the top and bottom conductive fill with that resin and what this does a resin gets put into it it becomes plated on top and bottom and that is your filled and capped via also otherwise known as ipc type 7 vias and to do this in altium if you go to the properties you can actually I, this is the full the ipc 4761 via type type 7 filling and capping and then you can i'm guessing you can probably put in some values there to what you want it to be done if very so specific i would also put this in the assembly notes of which vias you want capped and filled as a, another precaution as sometimes you do have to just manually tell them uh, your manufacturer they cannot read your mind all the time and i don't not sure how the whole gerber it, does it translate it must translate because it states here it's better to tell them you know it's better not to just get bored and you know you can't even do anything about it you realize that you just have holes drilled in so it's better now the problem with this is is that there's still an issue with this method and this method is that air bubbles can get trapped within this resin and upon reflow and, and you know when you come to assembly these things will heat up and it'll and it could just pop off it can just pop off the cap and this your ice will literally go flying and you cannot assemble anymore because of these air pockets inside and now you're thinking okay but if my manufacturer is also assembling shouldn't they tell me then or is there another work around this you see with sometimes manufacturers and not to talk badly about them but just some of them some of them will not tell you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and you are spending money to learn from these mistakes there are some that will tell you some that will flag up your errors some will 
tell you that like oh we don't have this and you know you need this take for example the flexible circuit one i didn't know that but this manufacturer did not tell me that you need vias to be placed in there or this circuit would not work they didn't ask why is there vias not in there what are these patches for whatever they just printed it as a show which is not their own fault in all fairness but some will tell you that this cannot be done i had a call with a brilliant uh, assembly manufacturing company the other day and gave me a whole load of information on what to do and what is this process about and he and he said specifically that some his assembly company will not do this they will not assemble any boards with this because of that very reason because the pad can heat and pop off your ic or whatever it is you are doing so what do you do around this this is where micro fires come in so we're here in our layer stack manager we're going to go to the via types and as you can see with my lovely two layer board i only have one maybe we should let's change this to f four as a, as a good example because two you won't really get anywhere so we have we have one let's add another one see this is a blind via it's going into just the top layer to the ground layer and if we get on properties we click micro via so this is a micro via and because they are so small and tight they are used to save space and increase the size of the pcb with these smaller with these smaller vias obviously as you can even just tell from this picture here look how the size comparison between this and these are not actually filled with conductive epoxy or resin or whatever it is and instead these are just how it is so we can select this so if we go to our properties we can select that and say oh we're going down to here and you know we just want maybe we just wanted to this two layer what if we go to this bottom layer oh okay okay it's not it's not really letting us here and that's and that's because if we did from top to bottom we've essentially got through via so it won't let us do that so what is the workaround if we can't just put a, a micro via straight through and this is where we have to stagger them so by staggering them and as you can see in the image on screen by staggering these vias we can have a little interconnect that goes to the other signal layer and then back down so this completely avoids the whole epoxy shenanigans and the risk of your ic flying off and you spending more money for components and your bill going up and whatnot but this is also another alternative method and of course because the level of complexity, these processes do not come cheap. They do not. I was absolutely shocked to hear when I got back the quote and I was just like, oh my God, I am in the wrong industry. If these if these boards cost a few grand to make or whatever, you'll be shocked to see the price. And that's because of the complexity of this process and what well, there's extra steps involved. So they got to charge accordingly. So do keep that in mind. And it's why I avoid BGA packages. So now that we've talked about that, what issues can be associated when you do this? Besides everything I've just said, I've completely deterred you off using this via and pad technology whatsoever. And you will never use BGA, BGA, but I will still tell you. We see here that we've come to our pad and it's 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And the diameter should be 0 0.2, yes. Well, it's not really accurate, but anyway. So what have I made the mistake here? And yes, this is fine with our traces here, but I've made my via a bit bigger than my pad. So let's say I, whatever, let's say I did it like this. What if I made my via like this size and I've made, I don't know, all my vias, I've made all my other vias how they are supposed to be in this pad. What you see here is that this via here is now going to be metalized as another pad. This is how the Gerbers are going to be produced. This is just in my case, of course. I'm not entirely sure. This is just in my personal experience, of course, but from what the Gerbers show, is that this annular ring here has now become a pad. So you've got this huge pad in comparison to this, to this, to this. And you may be thinking, well, that's fine, isn't it? Shouldn't it just be, you know, more solder equals better? Well, not really. While you may think that, there's this ink this clearance here has now become reduced so there is actually an issue that solder may jump across during the reflow process and that'll be a real big pain to sort out good luck doing that one without you just taking it off and redoing it again and then of course there would be the inadequate amount of solder because this is a bigger pad you know you you might not you might not even get a good connection essentially because of the differences in the sizes and whatnot a solder bowl may form and join it's all sorts of issues really and this was the issue i had because i had placed different size vias not exactly as in the pads so that was the error i wanted to tell you about and show you about and show you this magnificent technology and as an overview the vine pad technology that provides so many benefits it's really good it's really interesting to know of and that if you could see here there's there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it so tenting vise is the one you see in the pcb they just cover it and whatnot and of course i'll leave you to read that in your own time 
and it's really interesting to see again to summarize take precaution when you do these the price does go up when you use if you do use to do a volume pad the technology is a bit finicky <laughs> it's a bit finicky as in the ic can pop off if there's air pockets trapped in and personally i think i will only be using the micro wire way moving forward how do i ever need to route a bga package again which will be inevitable i will route something of that nature so i'll be using the micro wire way be careful about the size of your pads and the size of your vias make sure they are all identical to each other make sure you follow the mechanical layout of this package that you are doing and make sure you really check the footprint and lastly keep in mind that not all your manufacturers will do this kind of thing for you or not all assembly companies will do this thing for you so please do check before you decide to go within that put in your design rules design a board to that manufacturer's capabilities and then realize they can't do it for you